Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of swatches and tutorial using this beautiful thing right here. This is the NARS Narcissist Wanted palette. I'm so used to saying loaded that <laughs> this guy right here that I almost said that three times trying to say my intro. <laughs> but this is brand new. It's a limited edition, $59 on the Sephora.com website. The palette is metal. It feels nice in your hand. It feels kind of weighted. The front has like a pixelated picture. Beautiful. I love this right here. It's kind of like this smooth texture. Very nice. On the back, you have the names of the shadows. When you see them, like, so if you're using your palette, you're literally going to go like this to be able to see them. So don't turn it around. Like, I, it took me so many times to realize, just flip it up. <laughs> Inside, we have a nurse, a nurse, <laughs> a nice large mirror, and then these peachy pink tones, which are beautiful. Very wearable, but also you can get some dramatic looks with this palette. When I first got this, I got it out of the box. I could not get it open. I don't know if mine is the only one that's going to be that way, but I'm not being like dramatic. It was difficult for me to open. I, my daughter was laughing. I was like, you open it. So she was like, oh, this is hard. And she had to open the palette for me. Like, come on now. It just, it didn't want to open for me. But when I finally got it open, I saw it and I was like, is this smaller? Like, I didn't understand because this guy is a little bit bigger, but this is the NARS Loaded palette. They reformulated the shadows. I think this was um, the beginning of this year. I love this palette. Love it so much. It is better than their single shadows in my opinion. But I'm going to put this one up against it so you can see both the color difference. See more peachy wearable neutrals and more cool and warm down here. And this palette also has more of like these glittery shades that this one does not. The shadow size are the exact same. So both of them are 0 .4, 0 0.04 ounces each, but this one is closer together in the actual palette where this one has some space in between them. I found the mattes in this palette to be pretty much consistent with the mattes in this palette, really good. But then the shimmer shades are different. Like these these are more smooth and less metallic and these like this one doesn't have as much grit to it but like these shades here definitely have more of that shine and like a texture aspect to them before I get into the swatches I'm gonna read a little something something from the Sephora website limited edition it has 12 high impact shadows in a range of buttery matte lustrous satin and glittering metallic finishes I think that describes the palette really well the long wearing, blendable, and lightweight shades are crease and sweat resistant, while the all new pure pigment formula delivers the richest, most intense color payoff in just one stroke. All right, let's go ahead and get into the swatches. For the first row, we have Biarritz, I don't know how to say that, and Satisfaction, Delirium, and Temptress. Third row, we have Seven Heaven, Shadow Hill, Mendoza, and Wicked Game. And for the last row, we have Shooting Star, Lala, Fallen Star, and Coconut Grove. I think I am going to get asked about this other comparison, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys. This is the Wanted palette up against the Anastasia Beverly Hills Renaissance palette. So you can see the Renaissance definitely has more of like the berry, and this one is more peachy pink. There are some similarities, but I think that they are different enough. So if you're like wanting to justify it, it's justifiable, in my humble opinion. Even the neutral shades in here are just like a hint more orange, whereas these are a hint more peach. I have two complaints when it comes to this palette. A, the fact that I feel like I can't close it because I don't want to try and reopen it. And then B, I don't like this one shade. I love the whole layout of this palette. I think I will get a lot of use out of it. But this one shade I'm tired of seeing, and I even used it in my look today. It's this one right here. And I have like a MAC Dazzle shadow that's like this. It's in the Rihanna palette. It's, I just feel like it's it's... I see it everywhere and it's not one that I usually get a lot of use out of. I don't think it's like a bad shade. It is more glittery than the other ones in there. But I'm just, I don't want that shade in there. And I'm just being nitpicky. All right, let's go ahead and get into this eye look. Tom Ford number 13 brush. And I'm just working this into the crease and using small circular motions, probably bigger circular motions to blend this out. 
Goss number 20 and I'm taking that same shade and running it along my lower lash line. Wayne Goss number 17 and Shadow Hill. I'm going to deepen up the crease with this shade and the outer V as well. Doing windshield wiper motions first and then smaller circular motions to get this to blend into that transition shade. Again, I'm going to take that shade and run it along the lower lash line to deepen it up. MAC 221 and Temptress. That has a nice pigmentation to it. I'm tapping this on the outer corner here, and then I'm also going to work that into the crease about, about three quarters of the way. I'm taking Delirium on a MAC 242 and I'm putting it on dry. Put this all over the front three quarters of the lid and merging this over here. Go ahead and go back in and deepen up that reddish color. Same brush and I'm using Shooting Star. I'm using this wet because I've already done my makeup so I don't want it all over my face. I'm just going right over the last shade we used. And I'm using tapping motions when I'm doing this, not swiping motions. MAC 221 and Coconut Grove. I'm just gonna deepen up this very outer V right here. Now I lost a little bit of that red shade, so I'm gonna go right around the edges of that darker color just so that I bring it back in. This is a MAC 221. Temptress on a NARS number 20. And I'm going to buff this underneath the outer three quarters of my lash line. NARS contour and coconut grove. And I'm going to blend this on the outer half right here, making sure it connects to the top. I'm taking Mendoza and I'm using this wet so hopefully it doesn't fall all over my face. And I'm going to pop this on the front half of my lower lash line with a MAC 219. And then first shade in the palette on the inner corner as well as the brow arch and then I'm going to go apply my liner and mascara. All right, to finish off the look, I use this crayon from Linda Hallberg Cosmetics. This is Zeo Flash. It's that silver that you see at the top. And then in my inner rim, as usual, I put in my Via Benito from NARS, so top and bottom. And then mascara and everything will be listed down below. Ooh, and then for my inner corner, I just felt like I needed a little bit more on the inner corner. I went into this palette because this is the one I'm reviewing next. <laughs> and I used this shade right here. For the lips, no liner, just lipstick. It is the MAC Lip Tensity in Marsala. Everything else will be listed down below. So overall, first impressions, I like the palette. I think it's really nice. I'm really mad that I ended up shutting it. <laughs> but it is a beautiful palette. Let me know if you're going to grab this or if you already have. It, let me know if you have that problem with the class because it's gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> but I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.